People across the U.S. may be seeing changes with the plants that thrive in their area. An updated USDA map shows about half the country may be able to grow plants that are slightly less cold tolerant. I talked to one of the people who helped put the map together. I had one gardener tell me that, you know, I've started growing some new plants in my garden, a little here and there, and the plant hardiness map just kind of gives me official permission to do so. The USDA released the plant hardiness map late last year. It breaks down the U.S. into different categories based on the coldest winter temperature each year, averaged over 30 years. The idea was to create a map that was reflective of the extreme winter cold temperatures that might limit the ability of gardeners and farmers to grow perennial crops or in perennial plants that needed over winter. Dr. Chris Daly is a geospatial climatologist at Oregon State University. He's the director of the PRISM Climate Group, which worked to create this map. So it doesn't tell you when to plant in the spring, how long your growing season is, or how hot your summers are. It's all about extreme winter cold. In Idaho, that would be when you get these Arctic outbreaks, like the one we had in January. These are the extreme events that the plants need to be able to tolerate. Climate Central is an independent group of scientists and communicators who research and report facts about our changing climate and how it affects people's lives. This organization analyzed the temperature trend from 1993 to 2022. They found three cities whose coldest winter temperatures warmed the most significantly. From their analysis, Boise warmed the most. The coldest temps of the year shifted from about negative 5 degrees to almost 6 degrees. There are 13 different plant hardiness zones across the U.S. This shift takes Boise from Zone 6 to Zone 7. This information is relevant for plants that need to survive the winter, like trees, hydrangeas, and roses that stay planted all year round. In general, we're looking at about a 2.5 degree Fahrenheit increase between 2012 and 2023 maps. So according to the map, about half the country shifted into a warmer category and the other half did not. Dr. Daly attributes some of this to new data and better modeling techniques and not necessarily to climate change. So I think one of the things to keep in mind is that while temperatures are starting to go up, we still get cold snaps. So I think the volatility is still there. So when you grow something that may be pushing the boundary of our zones. They might work for a while, for a few years, but there's still the possibility of getting that cold snap that can take them out or severely damage the plants. There are still quite a few factors that can affect your garden and crops besides the coldest winter temperatures, late spring freezes, summer heat waves and drought are all things that are not represented in this map. So Joe and Brenda, it doesn't necessarily mean that growing things in our area is getting easier, which isn't necessarily helping me with my green thumb. Okay, it's not helping me either. Yeah. <laughs> and I really wanna be good at this, you yeah. know? <laughs> we grow. actually, we've been working on our backyard and yeah. we thought we were growing weeds. It turns out they were flowers. Okay. So something's growing. That's that's nice. That's really nice. And My nice. goal this yeah. year is uh, squash and uh, bell peppers. Oh, okay. we'll okay. see how it works. Well, let me know when you're bringing us lunch. <laughs> Thanks, Sophia. <laughs>